गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ द यूनिट फोर दैट इज अ एच पी एल सी हाई परफॉर्मेंस लिक्विड क्रोमेटोग्राफी दैट वी हैव टू डिस्कस अंडर दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव स्टी सीन दैट द सॉलिड एक्सट्रैक्शन एंड सॉलिड एक्सट्रैक्शन सॉलिड फेज एक्सट्रैक्शन इन दॉलिड एक्सट्रैक्शन वी हैव सीन द काउंटर करेक्ट करेंट Correct counter current or say counter correct current that we have seen. Then we have talk about the solid phase extraction. Then we have seen application. After the application, we have talk about with the application we have talk about the difference between the that particular solid phase extraction and the solvent extraction. We have seen the application of this particular. uh solid phase extraction solvent extraction then now and the limitations and the advantages also we have focused then factors affecting the solvent extraction that we have studied now today we are going to continue the next part of this topic uh, unit the next topic is the high performance liquid chromatography in short it is called as the hplc HPLC is a liquid liquid chromatography it is a liquid liquid type chromatography method leads to separation by the partition mechanism this method is used for the separation determination identification characterization and estimation of the component of the samples the main use of this particular uh, chromatography is to separate to detect to identify to characterize and to estimate the different components from the sample now we have to talk about the two different types of this particular chromatography normal phase chromatography and the reverse phase chromatography in the normal phase chromatography the stationary phase on an inert solid support is polar organic liquid phase the uh, stationary phase on an inert solid support is polar organic liquid and a mobile phase is non polar phase this is known as the normal phase chromatography what is the normal phase chromatography see when we talk about the chromatography you should always remember there should be the two things one should be the stationary phase and second one should be the mobile phase stationary phase is nothing but we have to load the sample on the stationary phase and a mobile phase we have to run that particular um, uh, which we can say uh, uh, that we can say like that we have to uh, use uh, we have to run that particular uh, chromatography under the particular uh, liquid okay here in normal phase chromatography and uh, what is the difference between the normal phase and the reverse phase chromatography is that we have seen about the normal phase chromatography now for the reverse phase chromatography the stationary phase on an inert solid support is non polar organic liquid phase and whereas the mobile phase is a polar phase this is known as the reverse phase chromatography in the normal and in the reverse in the normal phase stationary phase should be the polar organic liquid whereas the mobile phase should be the non polar but in case of the reverse phase chromatography uh, that stationary phase should be the non polar whereas the mobile phase should be the polar that is the basic difference in between the two type okay then we have to talk about the instrumentation following step involves in the hplc sample is dissolved in a suitable solvent that is a mobile phase it is injected into the system it get mixed with the mobile phase which is degassed the mobile phase under high pressure flows from the stationary phase in the column where the separation takes place a pre column used to saturate mobile phase with the vapors of the stationary phase as the solid comes out of the column it reaches the detector place 
next to the column components of the sample will be detected and estimated you can see here the basic components of this particular HPLC <coughs> here the sample is there that is sent to this pre column then here two different vessels are there one will be the a mixing vessel is there this solvent reservoir is there okay then this sample then the pressure valve is there hmm? this high pressure pump is there then the water jacket is there from this detector and the recorder this is schematic diagram of the particular HPLC what it has solvent reservoir degassive system degassive system pumping system pre column sample injection system then the column and detector this is about the block diagram of this particular HPLC it is not quite visible but you can write later one see we will go one by one that is a solvent reservoir you should know remember the what is the function of this particular thing to store the solvent it is made up of the glass and stainless steel uh, glass or stainless steel which can contain one to two dm cube of the solvent means one to two liter of the solvent then the what is the degassive system it is used to remove the dissolved gases like the oxygen nitrogen from the solvent degassive of the solvent can be done by different methods one by the by vacuum pumping system second distillation system with the heating and uh, heating and uh, string uh, stirring of uh, arrangement and third method can be can be guessed by the uh, spraying uh, or this sparing then pumps requirement of the pump pumping system should be should generate a pressure of about 6000 psi pump should have to provide flow rate ranging from 0.1 ml to 100 ml per minute the process of the flow of the liquid should be smooth and continuous it should not occur in the form of pulse pump should have to provides reproducible rates to the extent of 0.5 percent or less there are the three types of the pump reciprocating pump displacement pump and the pneumatic pump these are the different types of the pump which are available and which can be used in the hplc first one is the reciprocating pump motor is there reciprocating is there then this particular type of arrangement is there it considers a small chamber in which the solvent is pumped by the back and forth movement of the motor driven piston it consists of the two ball check walls which open and close alternatively control the flow of solvent solvent is in direct contact with the piston advantages of this particular pump small volume of the solvent is used the pressure developed can be order of the thousand ten ten thousand psi it gives constant flow rates independent of the solvent viscosity and the column back pressure it can be readily adapted to gradient elution technique the disadvantage is that it is not a pulse free displacement pump in the displacement pump you can see the arrangement of this particular pump diagram is very much important uh, this that drive control is there mobile phase reservoir is there piston drive motor is there and then column is there and that goes to the column this first that motor is there then the manual 
thing is there. Displacement pump considers large syringe like the chamber equipped with the plunger. Plunger is there that is uh, activated by the motor driven screw mechanism. It also produces a flow which tends to independent of the viscosity and back pressure which is a pulse free. The advantage is pulse free and the disadvantage of this particular displacement pump is limited solvent capacity and in inconvenience when solvent must be changed. Then the pneumatic pump C reciprocating pump displacement pump and the pneumatic pump pneumatic in pneumatic pump the mobile phase is placed in the collapsible container housed in vessel that can be pressured by the a compressed gas the pumps are inexpensive and the pulse free this is the your pneumatic pump disadvantage of this pump they have limited capacity and a pressure output as well as it depends of the flow rate of the solvent viscosity and the column pipe pressure it is not used in case of the gradient elution it produces a pressure of the order of 2000 psi this is the diagram of this particular thing you got this two uh, three types of the pumps are there first one is the uh, that is a reciprocating pump reciprocating pump is nothing but the small chamber in which the solvent is pumped by the back and forth motion of the motor driven piston then it consists of the two ball check walls you can see here two ball check wall is there which open and uh, close alternatively which control the flow of the solvent solvent is in the direct contact with the piston then small volume of the solvent is used pressure is uh, developed in the order of the 10,000 psi it gives the constant flow rates independent of the solvent viscosity and the column back pressure it can be readily adapted to the gradient dilution disadvantage is it is a not a pulse free it is not a pulse free technique okay. then we are talking about the displacement pump in the displacement pump it consists of the large syringe you can see here with a large syringe like chamber equipped with the plunger that is activated by the motor driven screw mechanism it also produces a flow which tends to the independent of the viscosity and the back, back pressure of the column which is pulse free the disadvantage of this pump is limited solvent capacity and inconvenience when solvent must be changed then the pneumatic pump in the pneumatic pump the mobile phase is placed in collapsible container housed in vessel that can be produced by a compressed gas the pumps are inexpensive and pulse free disadvantage of this pump they have limited capacity and a pressure output as well as depends on, on the flow rate of the solvent viscosity and the column back pressure it is not used in case of the gradient elution it produces a pressure of the order 2000 psi and we require pressure about the 6000 psi that these are particular limitations this next part we will see in the next lecture up to this part we will see we will stop here thank you